and welcome everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. We're focusing on a new way to optimize temperature monitoring for the pharmaceutical supply chain. And it's brought to you today by Onset and Pharma Logistics IQ. I'm your host, Janice Henry, editor of Pharma Logistics IQ. So large financial losses have hit pharma firms because of temperature excursions when transporting drugs. Um, it can take a matter of moments for a medicine to slip out of its permitted storage temperature. And now, a, temp a typical temperature excursion can take more than 40 labor hours across multiple departments within an organization. Reducing that number by as little as 10% across each investigation can result in significant savings for an organization. To combat excursions and transport medicine safely and compliantly, end-to-end -end monitoring and easy access to data is critical. Um, so today, attendees will learn about a fully integrated temperature monitoring solution, which provides automated data download, alerting, and reporting, enabling greater access to data while reducing the man hours needed to manage the supply chain. Before we start, I would just like to remind everyone that this is an interactive platform, um, so do feel free to ask your questions anytime in the Q&A chat box, and we will address those at the Q&A section at the end of today's webinar. So without further ado, I will introduce our speaker today. Um, we have Paul Della Villa, who's the Product Marketing Engineer at Onset. Um, so we're delighted that you can join us today, Paul, so please begin when you are ready. Good morning or afternoon, everybody, depending where you are in the globe. It looks like from our list we have some people from the U.S. and from Europe, so I want to thank everybody for stepping in and attending. Our presentation today is going to run anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes, and we're going to talk about uh, an onset solution uh, to a problem that we all face in the industry. As Shanice mentioned, it, this is interactive. I would very much encourage the attendees to put some questions through during the presentation. Some of them I'll be able to answer as we go through the slides. Others I will address at the end of the presentation uh, as they come in. So I want to thank everybody for that. And where I want to start this presentation is, is uh, just harping on some of the changing changes we're seeing in the industry. And for those of you who work in the industry, this, this is not new. We're seeing a massive increase in the number of two-date drugs in the supply chain. And we're seeing, uh, on top of that, we're seeing growth in not just traditional pharmaceutical products, but biosimilars, generics, and other types of drugs that are coming to the supply chain that are putting stresses on your traditional pharmaceutical manufacturers, as well as the suppliers downstream, whether that be packaging companies, whether that be logistics companies that are actually working through with these companies. And all of these factors are really driving cost into the supply chain that, that is affecting our customers. And when we talk about the specific pressure points we're seeing, the, the increase in biological pipeline is probably the greatest driver for all of that. Additionally, as we're going through here, we're seeing uh, the adoption of GDP regulations not only hit the pharmaceutical companies that we have, but also downstream on their suppliers. We're seeing increased pressure on organizations uh, such as wholesalers, distributors, trucking companies, and having to comply with GDP regulations in Europe, the United States, or around the globe has really caused issues within the supply chain. And coupled with those increased biological pipelines comes increased product value. And as we look at what some of those mean, those, those mean competitive cost pressures in the system. On top of that, you have with those gener generic and biosimilars, pressure on pharmaceutical companies to drive down their own costs of product, which means, of course, cost-saving measures in the supply chain. When you're looking at this GDP regulations, those operational costs are really rising, whether they are through validation exercises, increased packaging or active shipping costs, uh, whether people are looking at changing how they're shipping to try to drive down those costs. All of those are really affecting both those downstream suppliers all the way up through traditional pharmaceutical manufacturers. And of course, with increased product value, you always have that overwhelming uh, risk of the cost of product loss. The average cost of a lost shipment due to te temperature excursions are growing every single year. And what that really means is all of that kind of drives into how people are managing excursions. Do we have to throw out product because there is an excursion? Can we look at stability data to say, 
look, this is how we can justify using this product. All of that is are driving new pressure points into the supply chain. And all of the industries, they're, they're looking for ways to improve, and the big question is, how do we find those areas? Where, could, where, where can I find places where I can drive costs down? Where can I apply places where there's improvement? And the big issue, the big answer to that, in my opinion, is temperature data. Looking at information in the supply chain, looking at the temperature data that you have, and then making good informed decisions about that. Now, we talk about using temperature data to drive down costs in the supply chain, but realistically, it's using good temperature data. And when I say good temperature data, I mean information that actually gives you the ability to make improvements. It's not just having a temperature data in a package or on a pallet that's going through the supply chain. It's being able to understand what that temperature data means. Was this an active shipment? What type of packaging are you using? What, who, what carrier are you using? Good temperature data with all of those extra pieces of information in it really give customers the ability to go after things like just as buying a transition to, from air to ocean, looking at places where they can reduce packaging costs because they don't necessarily need the most robust packaging, helping them identify real versus perceived risk. One of the biggest things I saw when I was back in my consulting world was that customers said, this, this lane, there's a lot of risk. This lane, there's a lot of risk. But when they went and actually looked at the temperature data, they might find out that the carrier using, they're using on that lane actually mitigated a lot of that, and they were spending a lot of undue time and unnecessary effort on places where there wasn't as much risk as other areas. Uh, on top of that, good temperature data allows you to react faster to excursions being able to under, understand what happened, how it happened, reduce the amount of time that it takes to uh, identify why there was an excursion, and write a kappa. And finally, I mean, this is something that everybody can use, but grading your logistics suppliers, understanding who's a good supplier and who could use some help, understanding which routes are better with one supplier as opposed to another. Good temperature data can really help drive optimization in that, in that means. And all of that kind of drives into taking that accept-reject decision, so looking at was this a good temperature graph or a bad temperature graph, and turning it into real KPIs. Understanding of whether we're looking at a specific lane or original route. Understanding, hey, look, I'm going from the Netherlands to Shanghai, but this route through Frankfurt's better than the route through Dubai or vice versa. And then understanding in those lanes or routes or regions where real risk is without over-engineering your entire supply chain. And of course, the key to success there is understanding which technologies can really help you do that. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we think an ideal platform would be to really drive value in the supply chain and help you realize some of those goals. For us, a good platform would really integrate your shipping data with temperature data in the system. And that doesn't mean, oh, look, I know that a shipment went from origin A to B. It's understanding it went from A to B, it was shipped on this day, we use this carrier, this packaging, this shipping method. We understand the different touch points, whether it went ground to air to ground to air, or whether it was cross-docked in a certain facility or a certain airport. All of those things really help you understand where potential pain points are being and help alleviate those ahead of time. Uh, on top of that, the system shouldn't put undue burden on your operational team. It's great to have all of that data, but if you're adding 30 or 40 percent of your man hours to putting that data into your system, it's not really a good, it's not really a good process. Your system should really take the work out of your operations team and put it on the system that's actually uh, working in your background. You need to make it easy to retrieve data, and that's whether that's logistics data, or that's temperature data, or a little of A and B. Systems that you use really need to make it easy to get at that information, automate getting that information to you, whether that's delivery of reports or setting up um, uh, KPIs that allow you to look at things in real time, and give you a good overview of what's happening in your supply chain. And again, I've harped on this a few times already very early in this presentation, but you really need to leverage your supply chain data with these systems. 
Traditional temperature uh, monitoring systems give you a place to store data. They might give you a cloud. They might give you the ability to say, you know, what's your origin or destination. But really good advanced systems take that information and truly integrate, with it, integrate it with your uh, built up logistics systems, whether it's an SAP or an inventory management system. That's really where a lot of your value can come, is taking that information and automating it. And finally, you know, we really look at a system that will make it quicker to investigate excursions. At the end of the day, the first four things that I talked about really help you drive improvements, but where a lot of the time, energy, and costs really come in are that excursion investigation, understanding where an excursion happened, why it happened, and how do we stop it from happening again. And those building blocks really lead um, to the last point that needs to be made here is all of these systems should not be uh, increasing your operational costs, whether that's through hardware or through man hours. These new systems and new technologies that we have really should help you drive savings in your supply chain as well as all, as all of these other benefits. So when talking about considerations for a system, you, you do always have to look at the cost considerations there. And the first thing you have to look at is really does new technology costs, they need to be weighed in both short-term and long-term value. Within this industry, any time that you go ahead and put a new system in, there's a lot of buried cost. Whether that cost is revolved around qualification activities, evaluating the system, uh, the time it takes just to rewrite SOPs and distribute them throughout their supply chain, there's a lot of kind of hidden costs up front but those need to be weighed against the long-term values of how much time savings you can actually gain within a system. Additionally with that, you need to understand that hardware costs should not be the driver of their system. Everybody right now uses data loggers at some point in their supply chain, whether it's storage, whether it's actually in packages, whether it's in trucks or trailers. Those hardware costs um, for new technology should not be increasing your cost. You shouldn't be looking at more expensive data logger technology. You should be looking at technology that's the same or cheaper, but gives you more value and more options to increase the information you have in your system. Systems need to be upgradable. We're in, living in a world right now where technology is changing rapidly. There's always new technology in the market, and the system that you pick now you're not going to want to redo that system every three or four years. It needs to be something that you can grow with, something that can take new technology and build with your supply chain as you grow in your system. And finally, you know, we highly recommend that changes should be used with widely available technology. There was a push a few years ago to kind of go to RFID technology, kind of, and what we found within the industry is that it was just too cost prohibitive because of the cost of scanners and the infrastructure around it. There are a lot of new technology in the mar market that are ubiquitous, that are being used in operations platforms, that can be used in cold chain monitoring platforms, they can be used within the business side. And those new technologies should be what we're looking at to really drive and grow the system. So what I'm going to throw at you now, and one of the big things that I want to talk about, is this idea of IoT, or the Internet of Things. And when we talk about that and the cold chains move into IoT, we're really talking about looking at technologies that are cost-effective alternatives to traditional USB loggers that are out in the market. Uh, these should be technologies that can be used across the entire platform, whether you're working in a clinical or a commercial space, whether you're looking at a storage facility or all the way down to a pharmacy. These technologies should work across the entire supply chain and make it easier for you to track temperature and understand the entire product life from manufacturing all the way down to patient distribution. These types of technologies will allow you to integrate your logistics information for better decision making and faster response. The beauty of IoT is that technology and the devices there can be automated, really can help you build system intelligence to look at where problems are, and try to identify them before they impact your supply chain. Now, we're, we're about 15 minutes into the presentation, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our solution. And what I'm going to do here for the next few minutes is talk a little bit about the in-temp monitoring solution, which Onset provides. And then toward the end of the presentation, I'm really going to focus on how our solution can help 
both the commercial and clinical space and some of the values that we have there. So the Intent Cold Chain Monitoring Solution is really based on a number of different hardware and software solutions. We have our traditional data loggers, our CX400 and 500 solutions that are designed to monitor storage and in-transit temperatures. We have a gateway device that really allows the automation of getting that temperature information to our Intent mobile application, as well as our Intent cloud database. So it's a full integrated solution that really allows you to look at everything from the pharmaceutical manufacturing side of things, all the way down through logistics management, um, vaccine program management, all the way to hospitals and clinics that are um, distrib distributing those products to their end customers. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is all our, our core data logger solution, which is our CX500 series. So loggers are designed for in-transit monitoring, single use or multiple use. And they are a Bluetooth technology, meaning that you can operate them, start them, launch them, download them using smartphones or tablets or our mobile gateways, meaning that these devices don't need to be plugged into a computer to download. You don't need to manually process these as they move through the supply chain. The Bluetooth, uh, the Bluetooth ability of these loggers gives you a really nice way to get information into your system faster and into the hands of people who really need that information. With those, we have our CX400 series data loggers, which are designed for the monitoring of storage, storage whether that's a walk-in freezer, refrigerator, or warehouse, whether it's refrigerators at clinic sites. These are areas that really allow you to take your storage data and integrate them in the same system where you're monitoring temperature through the supply chain to really get a holistic view of where temperature information is and what's affecting your supply chain. The next piece, of, the next piece we're going to talk about, and this is actually one of the key foundations of our system, is our CX5000 gateway. And this is really the next generation of where temperature monitoring is going in the supply chain. This device looks like a small wireless router, and what it does is it automates auto monitor download and data recovery. And what that really drives our customers to, and where we've seen a lot of success in the system, is it helps ensure 100% data recovery in the supply chain. It takes the pressure off quality systems to make phone calls when loggers weren't downloaded. It takes the time out of the operations group from finding your data loggers putting them in a box, and then at the end of the day, going and downloading your information to a computer, emailing it to different people who need to see it. This automates getting that information to our cloud system and really gives you that ability to get information quicker to those who need it. And the beauty of this on top of it is it takes our standard data loggers and turns them into devices where you can get real-time alerts at cross-docking and transit points or real-time alerts in storage applications where you wouldn't get that from a traditional USB logger. And on top of that, I mean, the, the key here is that for your large-scale shipping operations, it offers a piece of automation that you would never get with a traditional USB data logger. All of these hardware pieces are nice, but really they're, they're driving into the backbone of the system, which is our Intent mobile application, which is used to transmit information, connect, configure, and download loggers, and then the core of our system, which is our secure web-enabled database. This right here is the system that really gives you the ability to drive a lot of those features and functions that I talked about earlier in the webinar. Our system is a free, easy-to-manage secure cloud database, meaning that it's completely encrypted from top to bottom, um, so you don't have to worry about uh, loss of data or security breaches. It's got customizable user access, so it's a great system to be used either within a warehousing application or a full-scale pharmaceutical logistics operation. We have some great advanced uh, tools that allow you to search for the information you need and then run analytics. And the beauty of our system is it can be used as a standalone system. You can set it up, add information at the point of shipping, or for those companies that really want to drive value in their system, our operation system very easily integrates with the ERP systems in the world, making it easy to pull your logistics data into our system to run aggregated reports or take the temperature data from our system and push it into your ERP systems if that's where you'd rather do your analytics. 
It's a great piece of flexibility that we found our customers really enjoy. On top of that, as we keep going with here, uh, this system is top to bottom fully validated. It's 21 CFR Part 11 compliant, and it really gives you the ability to know that if you're standing in front of an audit or trying to comply to GDP regulations, our system gives you a great opportunity to really present the best foot forward when working in that. So that was the brief overview of the system. And what I really would like to spend the rest of the presentation on the last ten, five or 10 minutes on is talking about how our system and how Bluetooth can really add value to, to both the clinical and commercial space. And when we talk about advantages of Bluetooth and why this, we think this is the right technology moving into the future, um, one of the nice things that we have is you have great access to data. Within our application, you give the ability to pre-check shipments going out the door. You can make sure that loggers are started so you never risk putting an unstarted logger on a pallet again. You can view, transit po you can view data at transit points. It's not real-time data. It's not sending information up to the cloud during the shipment, but you're also not paying for the cost of that. It gives you the ability in a cost-effective way to understand at different points in the supply chain if there's an issue, and can I be proactive in looking at that. And with our cloud database, it gives you the ability to upload information to a globally accessible system. You can, you can look at loggers that are downloaded in Hong Kong in real time in Amsterdam to understand what's happening and make great quality decisions. From a technology standpoint, you know, one of the best parts about Bluetooth is there's a strong existing platform for use. We're already seeing tablets move into the warehousing space because it gives more flexibility in operations. Using mobile devices and tablets throughout the supply chain are a cost-effective way to get information where it needs to go. The 100-foot line-of-sight range gives you great range for our product, meaning you don't have to be right next to the package. It gives you the cost-effective range of using Bluetooth without, need, um, without the limitations of, say, a near-field technology or the cost of a real-time device. Mobile, mobile devices are used throughout the entire supply chain, whether it's with specialty couriers, whether it's at end destination points, and really that accessibility is what makes Bluetooth the right product that goes through there. And because of the wide availability of those products, it really makes it easy to train customers. Mobile applications are becoming the norm in everyday life. Training, training your individuals in your supply chain and your customers at the end how to use this device really takes down the time and effort of using this. Now, what we're going to talk about here are the two key segments that we look at for this. We're going to talk a little bit about the advantages of using Bluetooth first in clinical trials through the development of drugs, and then we'll talk a little bit about the commercial side. The first thing that we really think uh, is valuable for the clinical trial space specifically is driving data response in all shipments. One of the things we hear left, right, and upside down from, the, um, from our CROs and our customers in the clinical space is we only get data back when there's an excursion. And if not, we're kind of running blind. We assume that there is no temperature excursion, but we don't know that. Automating the download of information, one, gives them assurance that there weren't ex excursions through the supply chain, but it also gives them the ability to leverage that data, whether it's looking at cost optimization of packaging or looking at the most ideal routes. Using all of that data really gives you the ability to better understand your supply chain. And with, the, with that, using the Bluetooth technology really gives you the ability to um, leverage your specialty couriers or logistics spaces to be proactive about excursion reductions. We had a question that came through a couple minutes ago, and I think this is one of the great places to kind of talk about this. Uh, the question that came through is, can you read temperatures through a box? And one of the beauties about a Bluetooth solution is, yes, you can. We've tested with a number of our pa with packaging companies, whether it be polyurethane through VIP, and you can absolutely read the Bluetooth signals through, meaning that you can understand what's happening inside of your package without opening it, giving more flexibility to your couriers if there's a delay to still deliver your product to the end customer or your clinical site without having to worry about there being an issue or an excursion. 
On top of that, I mean, this and this is one of the key things as we're seeing clinical trials move into places like Eastern Europe, Russia, Africa. Leveraging cell phones in those remote areas really give you, do give you the ability to get information back in places where you couldn't before. We've seen it time and time again. When I worked on the, uh, with a customer on the clinical trial rollout of the Ebola vaccines in Sierra Leone, the biggest issue they had was they had great data logger technologies on their fridges, but they couldn't get that information back because while they had computers at site, they couldn't rely on those computers to have uh, internet access uh, quick enough to get data back to them. They kept seeing crashes. They couldn't get file sizes through that were large enough. Using cell phone technologies really gives you the ability, regardless where you are in the world, to get information back in a timely manner so you can make decisions. Uh, and as I mentioned again, this, the, the, the ability to leverage these existing technologies are going to take your costs down. You, don't, you can spend less time uh, and energy working with those trial sites because they don't need to do additional training. They don't need to work with a technology they're not familiar with. So, what I'm going to talk about now is what I see as a proactive clinical supply chain. Basically, looking at how we would see our system really integrating within our clinical supply customers. So, we look at first the shipment that might or originate in the United States, putting a, uh, putting a single use data logger in a package, having that information synced up to the cloud so you know the logger was started, you know when it was sent, sent and where it's sent. You can see that logger go through your supply chain on an aircraft uh, within the trucking um, areas because they're completely compliant uh, for all those systems. You might have that package put on a truck at, um, going out to a clinical site and you'd be able to take your mobile device for your specialty courier, confirm that that package is still in range, send that information up to the cloud so the sponsor can actually see that we've transitioned from air to road, but there's no issues in our supply chain. And finally, using our gateway at the end destination site, have that logger automatically download and push back up to the cloud so you confirm that you have a good shipment and put in a refrigerator that has a CX400 logger so you can consistently see not only that the temperature was maintained through the supply chain, but also in the storage location at the, at the end of your supply chain. Really, this gives you great peace of mind and confirms that you have excursion-free shipments. And the beauty of this system specifically at the end is using our gateway technology, using our CX400 or our CX500 logger, it takes all of the responsibility away from your, your clinical site from monitoring temperature. It takes away any burden they have and it takes away any operational time they would have to spend so they can spend their time making sure that they're dealing with patients, helping patients through the clinical trial process, which is so important, and making sure that they're getting the correct dosages, making sure that they're getting these things on time without worry of risk of adulteration of product. That's the vision of where we can see the supply chain moving. And that's where we see some of the great advantages in the commercial space, or the clinical space. But from there, we also can see value in large-scale commercial distribution. Um, when really the value there is being able to upload and pair temperature data with logistics information so you can drive your KPIs and really start to understand what's happening in your supply chain. Integrate with the ERP system so you're not doing things manually. You're taking your time, you're taking your time and giving it back to people on the floor so you need to spend less time dealing with adding information and more time optimizing your processes. Getting information to your decision makers faster in the event of an excursion. Being able to download an information, download information via a gateway at a destination site and sending it up so they can make accept or reject decisions so you can decide whether product needs to be quarantined or can, whether it can be distributed quicker. It reduces your setup and download times. You're not spending time saying, oh, I need this, lo this data logger with this temperature configuration for this shipment, but I have a different data logger for a different temperature range. The beauty of using Bluetooth is you can identify the temperature range at shipment when it's going out the door without uh, adding time to your system. And then the beauty of this is we have bulk configuration options, so there's, it's an easy operational setup and uh, really gives you the ability and flexibility on the floor to do things quicker 
and without having any issues in the supply chain. So to summarize the commercial advantages, the Bluetooth really gives you a great airline compliant IoT solution, gives you the ability for bulk launching and um, operations, which is ideal for high, vol high volume distribution without adding e extra time or energy to your system. You can see interior package or pallet temperatures, so you can get information during the supply chain that you can't do with traditional USB loggers. You have cost-effective automation processes for getting data and pushing it into the systems you need. And the big key here is you can integrate your logistics information and drive better KPIs through your system. That's the crux of what this system can really do for it. A great long-term system integration, it's designed to be a great stand-up system or designed for integration. It's secure and encrypted from top to bottom, whether you're integrating within your APIs to your system and it's developed by a partner that really, do, an onset that really does understand some of the issues and uh, issues that you have in your system and can help you save those, help you work through those moving forward. That really takes us to the crux of what we have for our CX, our Intemp system. We talked about scalability, the ease of use, the powerful tools for data analytics and where it can help you in both clinical and commercial spaces. A little bit about Onset, for those of you who don't know us, we've been a global leader in the data logger technology since 1981. Our Hobo line of data loggers is widely used in the research space, whether it's out in weather stations, environmental test equipment, and, uh, or underwater environment. And our Intemp line, what we talked about today, is an ideal solution and integrated already in a number of large-scale pharmaceutical operations. We're an ISO 9001 lean manufacturing company and one of the nice things about us is we do all of our manufacturing and design in-house here in the United States, meaning we have great control over the quality of our product, and we have the ability to very quickly and um, flexibly take our great engineering team and help improve our solutions to really meet our customer needs. So what I'm going to do now is um, we're about 35 minutes into the presentation. I'm going to hand this back to Shanice. I think there are some questions that come, have come through. And what I'd like to do is uh, encourage the group to send some questions in. Uh, let me know what you think of the solution. And we'll spend the last 15 minutes or so answering those questions. So Shanice, if you wanted to go back on, we can go from there. Great stuff. Thanks, Paul. Um, yes, yeah, so as, as indicated by Paul, um, we're now at the Q&A section of the webinar. Um, so it's great to see a couple of those questions uh, flowing in. But please do enter your, you know, your thoughts, any questions, um, anything that maybe struck you that you'd like to sort of delve into a bit more. Enter that into the chat box um, and we'll try to get it to it as much as we can. Um, what we will do is we will start with our first question. Um, our first question here says, do you need a mobile device to launch a logger and gateway? Yeah, so that, that's a great question that came through. And, you know, with Bluetooth technology, you do need that mobile device, whether it's a tablet or phone, to launch these loggers. But it really does add a lot of flexibility to the front end for launching and adding information at the time of shipment. Um, the second question, uh, do you need a mobile device to read out the loggers? Read out of loggers is a little bit interesting because you can do it with a mobile device, but really the gateway platform that we have um, at destination sites or within the supply chain really does automate that download that takes away the time, for, uh, time and energy of those co uh, for our customers and gets information up to the cloud faster than you would with a traditional solution. Before we go on to the, to the next question, when you were noting about the clinical trial supply um, chains and how that this um, your solution can be weaved in, I think it, it does touch on a very important point. I've been looking into the clinical trial supply industry myself a little bit, um, and wastage is coming up as such a key thing at the moment, um, and the controls on wastage. Um, and visibility, like with you know more sort of controls on um, data visibility, is going to be something that really will help shrink those wastage levels, which um, um, can be quite staggering as, as far as I've seen so far within clinical trial supply. So, um, yeah, really interesting. All right, next question. Are the loggers compliant with IATA battery requirements? Yes, absolutely. We use a small coin cell technology that uh, is compliant with the IATA battery regulations that came out last year while still giving you 
for our single and multiple use loggers at least a year of battery life within the product. All right. Is it truly a free cloud system? Yeah, and that's a great question. Our cloud solution and the software that we have in the back end really is a free solution. We have the ability to add as many customers as you want to that. You can set up multiple configuration profiles for your loggers, manage all of your notifications, and really the, the power of the system is the reporting tools and the delivery of information that you can set up. You can, auto you can save and automate searches, set up weekly, monthly, daily reports to come through to you that give you great snapshots into what's happening in your, happening in your supply chain and give you the ability to see what's happening condensed down into usable information. It's not just a temperature graph, it's taking that and putting it into a solution that may, gives you the ability to take actionable um, steps to improve your supply chain. Okay, next question. What type of analytics are available with your system? That's a really good question too. Uh, our system has a number of analytics tools built in, and you have your standard multi-graph and summary statistics that are there, but we also have some really nice tools that give you the ability to get customized alerts when there were both downloads of alarms or just delivery of product, letting you know that the product got there and was in within range. On top of that, we have tools that you can set up to give you summary alerts of alarms that come in, so you can understand not just that there was an alarm, but when it happened, and what supply chain it happened on, whether that was the origin, destination, the carrier. All of that information that can be put into our system really can be added to those alert and alarm reports, making it easy to identify what happened, where it happened, and potentially why it happened. Is Bluetooth secure? Yeah, that's another great question as well, because we, we hear all the time about um, the security within the supply chain. The way our system works within Bluetooth is that we have a true data encryption from both the logger into our mobile device and gateway platforms, and then up through our cloud system. So the transmit of information is absolutely validated from each point within the system, and it's completely encrypted. So even if people were trying to hack it, the information that, were, that they would see would be encrypted and they'd have no ability to access or, or adulterate that information. I think you touched on this slightly in one of your other answers. Um, we've got a question here asking, can the system send me automatic alerts? Yes, it can. Within our, with our gateway device, our, the system can absolutely send you automated alerts when there are loggers within range. And that's really one of the key features there, whether it's a logger in this, uh, going through a hub in the supply chain or whether you're using our CX400 loggers in a storage application the gateway really gives you the ability to uh, get those real-time alerts and get information to you whether or not you're on site. Okay, and how many users can access the system? Uh, it's an unlimited, unlimited amount, and the nice thing about our user access is that you can set custom levels of access, giving the right people the right access to the system. Your quality team might have the ability to access the temperature configurations for your loggers and the notifications, while your management team might have access to the reporting uh, tools they have in there, while your operational team might just be given access to the applications to start and launch loggers. It's completely flexible and you can add as many users as you need within your supply chain. Great, good to know. All right, we're seeing a fair few questions flow in. Please do keep adding yours in. Um, right, bring us to the next question. Uh, quite a direct one. What do the loggers and gateway cost? Uh, the um, CX500 uh, in transit loggers uh, are the same price, if not less, than what you would see for the major USB loggers in the market. And it is somewhat volume dependent. I highly recommend our customers reach out to us and talk to us a little bit about what they're using the loggers for, and we can put together some quotes for that. For our Gateway and our CX400 products, we actually sell those over the web, and they're a pretty cost-effective options. Our Gateway starts at $250, and our CX400, which are those storage loggers, uh, start anywhere from $119 up to $150. And those are battery-replaceable multiple-use units.
Are there any plans for Intemp to provide the gateways to any logistics caps? Yes, we're currently working with a number of large-scale logistics organizations. Um, we've, uh, both, we've worked with them both on the adding loggers into their supply chains, but also put, putting these gateways at different hubs. Depending on the logistics provider, we're at different stages in that, operate, that operation. But what we are doing is with our customers who are using the products, we're working with their providers to get those hubs in the places where they need them so that they can get the right, the right value out of the system. Great. Um, next question here. In Temp Connect, is the validation process documented, and can the customer or their certification organization perform an audit of the system? Yes. Our software platform is developed completely in-house with our software team. We take it through our, um, our quality uh, development process, which is driven by ISO 9001. Everything is fully to documented top to bottom, and we do have all of our validation documents in place. We encourage our customers to engage with us through our audit process. We've been audited by a number of companies in both the clinical and commercial space, and I'm pr uh, proud to say we've passed every single one of those audits to date. Yeah. Next question, do you have disposable loggers with the same technology for cut roses shipment? Yeah, absolutely. Our CX501 and 502 data loggers are both single-use loggers. They're designed for logging in the supply chain from point A to point B. Uh, and the 501 is a 15-day logger, so it'll log data up to 15 days. And our CX502 logger is designed for a little bit longer shipments like sea containers and can log data up to 90 days. Um, is, are the onset data loggers updatable, and is there a huge cost? So that, that's one of the beauties of our system, is our system, our loggers are updatable. Uh, you can, um, as we have new features and functions, we roll them out with our loggers, but we can also push firmware updates via our mobile application. And the beauty of our gateway platform that we have out there is these loggers can be bought and used within, our, within the existing mobile application. And if you decide to add those gateways into the supply chain later, they, they are upgradable and will work seamlessly. And the last part of that, and I will mention this, there are no costs for upgrades within our system. So if we put an uh, upgrade into our cloud solution, if we put an upgrade out for our app or our logger, all of that is free. There's no additional recurring cost that you'd have within the system. Okay, so it's just a one-time cost. Great. Yes. Um, next question. What is the difference between CX models 400 and 500? Our CX 400 loggers are really designed for storage applications. So the big difference is they're, they're a bigger logger. They're multiple use and battery replaceable. They have that nice viewable screen on it, and they, off, they have uh, blinking lights for, uh, for alarms, and they also have an audible alarm on them. Our CX500 is a little bit of a stripped down version. It's designed more for the logistics space. We have both single use and multiple use loggers of those. The CX500s are not battery re replaceable, uh, and they're good for one year. So depending on your application, they would be, they could, um, one's designed for storage, one's really for logistics. Okay, another question here. Apart from my own users, who else can see or access my data? Nobody, and that's one of the nice um, parts of the encryption in our system. So when a logger is launched, um, it automatically encrypts to your specific account. So only users who you give access to can view and see that data. Everybody else could see that there might be a logger in range, but they wouldn't be able to see what is actually happening with that logger. They don't know if that lo um, whose logger that is or what the temperature data associated with that is. Great. I'd just like to um, remind everybody to keep on inputting your questions. Welcome to anyone who's joined us late. We're in the interactive Q&A section. Um, please do yeah, enter any thoughts, um, queries, um, or yes, anything you'd like to know more about, um, and we'll, we'll try to address them as much as we can. We're having a few flow in, which is, which is great to see. All right, next question. Um, can the gateway be configured to send email alarms for deviations? 
Absolutely. Uh, the, way, the way that our system can work is that um, you can set up notifications that can be sent when a logger is downloaded when there's an alarm. So within our system, uh, you can set up different configurations for your profiles, whether that's 2 to 8, 15 to 25, uh, whether you're a frozen profile or a very specific uh, temperature profile. All of that can be programmed into the logger. When that logger is downloaded, the system is smart enough to allow it to say, hey, there was an alarm. I'm going to alert the people that need to be alerted that there was an issue so they can take action. Great. Would most major carriers have the ability to access these devices, or would we need to make arrangements with the carrier to inform them? Uh, right now, we're, 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 um, you would have to make, a rare, uh, make arrangements with the carriers. We have approval to use all our loggers on all of the major carrier groups, so there's no risk there. They're uh, completely acceptable within the supply chain. Access to those loggers, so the ability to get information back during the supply chain is still a process that we're working with, a, with our customers and their specific carriers. We've got a question here asking, do you offer training guides for setup or online slides? And they genuinely want to know about how the onset support system would work. That's a great question. Uh, we have a multi-tiered approach for support. So first off, for our major pharmaceutical customers, uh, we work directly with you to identify the best way to set up the system. We will absolutely put together webinars, training materials, or uh, specific training documents as needed throughout the supply chain. Uh, for customers who want to just get an overview and an idea of what's happening, on our website we have great uh, stock training videos that show you how you can connect the loggers, configure them, set them up, and use our Intemp Connect system. As, from a, as a support standpoint, we have a uh, fully built out technical support team in-house that is fully trained on the system and is, uh, you have the ability to email, chat, or call into our team and they're, they're available to help you 8 to 8 EST uh, or other hours as we've, uh, uh, with specific customers. What is the temperature range the units are calibrated for? Are they capable of monitoring for minus 70 degrees? So right now, our CX500 range uh, are, are, calibrated from are calibrated to operate between negative 30 and 70 C. Our CX400s with the probes can go down to negative 40. And I'm actually really happy to announce that uh, in the Q4 this year, we're we'll be coming to market with both a dry ice logger that will is, is calibrated and validated down to negative 95 C and also a liquid nitrogen temperature logger for our biologics or some of the um, more biotech spaces that's been calibrated at negative 196 degrees Celsius. Both of those are coming out in a single and a multiple use logger uh, and will work within the same systems that we currently have. That's interesting. Next question, we've got a last couple coming through here. Um, we do have time to address um, some more, so please do enter any if you can think of some uh, that haven't been asked uh, as of yet. All right, next question. Our facility has a building automation system we are purchasing. Um, we will be using one on each appliance. Can we read temperatures from a mobile device at home? With, with the gateway, you can get automated downloads of loggers on a daily basis. It's not a real-time read where you can go in and pull that information, but what you will get is in the event of an alert or alarm, that information pushed to the system so it, it would be visible in those cases. And what's nice about our system is we have worked with other customers that have building management systems, and with our back-end secure API, we can actually integrate our system right into BMS systems to give you value uh, and integrate our loggers with your existing systems. And finally, can you integrate serialized segments into your solution? That's a great question. I, I know the industry across the board is looking at the serialization requirements that are coming out in the next couple of years. And what we're currently working, we're currently working on is different ways to integrate those with different uh, people. Because most of our customers aren't fully there yet, we don't have a true serialization system there, but 
within the different aspects of our system, we've already built in hooks and ways that we can include those serialization pieces in as pulls from other systems or pushing our system into those serialization uh, platforms that are coming out. So we see it as we see that as one of the places that the futures is going. And as I talked about earlier, we've really designed our system to be able to build into those as it becomes the norm within the pharmaceutical supply chain. Okay, we've got another question that's just come in here asking um, whether information can be pulled um, from the mobile device without a gateway. Yeah, uh, you can absolutely download a logger with a mobile device. You do have to be within range of that logger, so that's 100 feet. And then from the mobile device, just like the gateway, it will push information up to the cloud, and then the cloud being kind of the, the hub of the system will send those alerts or allow you to do the analytics. Great stuff. All right. Um, I think that's all we have time today. So we've now closed the Q&A section of today's webinar. Um, thank you so much for everybody who's attended. Um, we do have your details, the people who have sent in the questions. Um, so if you would like any further um, assistance, please do just let us know, and we'll put you in touch with one of the, um, the members of the Onset team. Um, so before we wrap up today, Paul, do you have any closing remarks? I just want to thank everybody for their time today. I know everybody's time is really valuable, but I do think that our solution is kind of the next step of where temperature monitoring can go and can add quite a bit of value within the supply chain. I encourage everybody to reach out to me if you have additional questions or if I didn't answer your question uh, the way you'd have liked. We are more than happy to have a conversation or set up uh, individual demos of the system for those who are interested. Great. All attendees um, today will receive a link to the webinar so that you can watch um, again on demand if you would like. Um, you'll be notified um, by email for that. Um, again, thanks all for attending. Thanks, Paul, and Onset. Um, that concludes today's webinar.